evening. Welcome to the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County work sessions for February the 17th, 2021. Uh, can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, you have the agenda in front of you. I'd like to put an amendment in uh, the motion to approve the agenda with a change that we remove 2-01. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion please to remove from the current agenda to amend it to remove 2.01 and 3.01. Do I have a second? That would second. be that would be the uh, clay target for discussion and uh, uh, clay target for action item. A second. I have a second. Any discussion? Yes, I'd like to speak to my motion, please. Um, we have not received enough information to go forward with any kind of decision about this. I would like to table it further to another month. Uh, oh. Another month? Whenever, yes. Well, we'll, we'll get but it on the agenda. When, when information becomes necessary, but we don't need to discuss it tonight. Yeah, we're gonna I it, believe we don't yeah. need to discuss and it tonight. The motion that this evening will be pulled off the agenda for this evening. Yes. Any other discussion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, I would like to know when the agenda is going to be adjusted. This is the first I'm hearing about the agenda being changed just now. <clears throat> For these two items? For anything. If you're going to change the board agenda, I need to know. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, okay. if you'd like, I mean, we got a letter today. We've ha we haven't got. I haven't gotten enough information for me to make a good decision. And if the board uh, agrees with that, then we would just, you know, not have it on today's agenda. Uh, if that's a problem, uh, I don't have a problem with the fact that you want to move it. I'm saying that I should know, as the superintendent, your board your board handbook says that it comes through me and the board president. I was left out. The board president is aware, but the superintendent is not. Well, I apologize that uh, that I didn't get in touch with you quick enough. Uh, I mean, this was not done At last. All. This was done, not done last Friday. Uh, Monday was a holiday, and I think some. And that's one of the problems which I've always had a problem with the, the uh, agenda coming out too late. <sighs> We're getting on time now, but uh, he gave you every. What this agenda has been done. We haven't, at least as far as my team goes. What information are you lacking? I, I, We've presented on this for over a month now. Is there anything that we need to get for you? Well, I, I think we have an uh, insurance issue and a straight policy of how it's going to operate. And, yep, and yep, and Ms. Pullen has provided you with all the information that we've gotten. Well, I have something to say if, if it's all right with you. Okay. So last week uh, <clears throat> we discussed the authority of who can create this, you know, team. And uh, you had mentioned the uh, Maryland, what is it, the MPSSAA as the source giving you the, the sole authority to make the policy. decision. Our policy. So right. point, well, point of two, information. MP, point excuse information. me. Oh, oh, let, I speak? Let, him, let him finish. Thank you. This is something for discussion if we ever talk about this. We're just merely trying to change the agenda. Dr. Kane has asked why this was changed. What and information I think she do we have answer. and don't have? Okay. So I did take a look, and uh, the only thing in the MPSSAA, which is the, the Maryland Secondary School Sports uh, Authority, is uh, references disciplinary measures of student athletes that come through the, the county superintendent. There's really not a whole lot of other uh, authority in there, or even mention of the county superintendent. It's a lot about the state superintendent. So I took a look at policy 524, and uh, that does reference student organizations, uh, clubs, and that kind of thing. And um, so we need some clarification from our uh, board attorney, which we're getting right now, and how we can uh, make this happen. Um, Mr. Smith has mentioned some other information about what Ms. Pullen has sent earlier. Um, we're just not in a position right now to uh, have a, you know, basically a, um, to make a vote tonight on, 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 as the action item, uh, but we are close and we need another week, you know, to get this going. I don't agree for another month because Ms. Harper, as Ms. Harper suggested, because we'll be into or beyond the point that registration can occur for those students that are interested in it. So that's my position. Um, I don't mind taking it off the the uh, agenda tonight, it did come up kind of late in the game. I understand that. Uh, or we can keep it on and put it on for next week or, or whatever. 
we can go forward with whatever information we have tonight. Thank you for that. So it didn't come up You're late welcome. in the game. It didn't come up to me at all until just now. So not late, but at all. Yeah, I understand. And I'm not sure because what I just heard you say was that you wouldn't be able to take it to a vote tonight. And a vote automatically assumes that the superintendent is out of the process. And so that was a question for you. It wasn't a question for me. I'm not sure how long it takes for your attorney <laughs> to figure out what our policy says. Right. So. Well, it's, it's a, it goes a little deeper than that. I mean, I understand, um, but I would, the way I've read it and the way the attorney has read it and, you know, it, it, we need another more time before we can make a fair decision, you know, and um, uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And I'm happy to leave this on the agenda remove my motion and we can have what what discussion we want to have uh, i don't think there's i mean and we'll see what happens with the action as we, we get to that point if that's where you'd rather go i mean i i'm not i'm not trying to offend anybody or go around anybody i'm trying to get this done in a way that everybody has the best knowledge and information they can to make a reasonable decision. I want to be clear that we have given as much information as we know on a weekly basis and in between board meetings as well. So I don't want the public to be left with the sense that you have not gotten something from us, my team, that you have requested because you've gotten everything and then some. I also want to be clear that the turn that this is taking sounds as if, because when Mr. Schifanelli says we have to be able to make a vote and we can't make a vote and we need to make sure that we can get this done, automatically leaves me assuming that you're looking to override my authority. That's what it sounds like to me. Whether or not you leave it on the agenda tonight is irrelevant at this point because you already made your point, and I just want to be clear about my point as well. Okay. Well, I mean, we, I, got a, I think that the uh, email today came from Paul Carler on some information regarding that. So that was something new that made, she, came back. Immediately, as soon as she gets it, she sends it to Understand, you within minutes. Understand, which brought a couple more, you know, it got more questions and answers on that to, for me. Personally, so that that was one of the things on that um, that was concerned me. Um, as far as an action, uh, I'll be happy to bring it up, and the board can we can if the board wishes bring it up and ask you if we could move forward with this, and you can make your decision, and we can go go from there at a, at the at the next meeting or a following meeting or whatever. I mean, I I'm not trying. I'm just trying to work this through in a reasonable manner, and I understand. And I from last week that. You know, there certainly, and I'm not going to put words in your mouth that you're not for this organization at this time. I do not support having this club, this student organization, under the purview of the school system. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, and I respect that. And that's, you know, and that's one of the things we have to look at as a superintendent and as the board's. Uh, Projective too. So I'm just, but if, if, if we want to, you know, if you have no problem with us taking this off now, uh, in all fairness, it could be on the agenda for next week. Uh, hopefully we'll have information. And I'm not saying that information that Paul hasn't given us, Carl, I'm sorry, that is not enough, but you know, it, it hasn't become too real clear to me. Yes, this is completely reasonable, or there's a few little things that we need to address to make sure we dot our I's and uh, cross our T's. And, you know, also understand your position uh, where you are on that. Thank you. Okay, we have a the agenda, uh, and we right now have a amendment to remove clay target team from discussion 201 and action 301. Uh, any more discussion? I call for a vote. Can you call this by roll call, Ms. Uh, right? I will. Mr. Smith? Yet, uh, yes, approval with, with amendment. Okay, Mr. Schifanelli? Aye. Ms. Bennett? Aye. Ms. Harper? Yes. Ms. Morissette? Yes. Okay. Five. Motion carries. Okay, uh, everybody's had a chance uh, to uh, look at the minutes from February the 2nd. Sir, I'm sorry, February the yeah. 10th, open. Point of order, sir, you now need to have a motion to accept the amended agenda. 
thought we just voted on that. You mo you motion we made, had a motion to amend it. Now we have to have a motion to accept the amended agenda. Um, okay, let's uh, have a, uh, a motion to move, uh, accept the amended agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we have uh, minutes that everybody had a chance to review for February the 10th open. Yep. I have a motion. So moved. moved. Second. Any discussion? Call for a vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Okay, we're down to 202, opening of schools update or whatever. We were very, very excited to welcome students to A students anyway, A day students to schools on yesterday. The executive team and myself visited several schools. Uh, I do have to say it was it was very it went very, very smooth. It was the first day of school for, for many, many students yesterday. So teachers were excited to see them, administrators and cafeteria workers. Everybody was excited to see the students and as I spoke to them, they said that they were excited to be there aside from being sleep. So that was a that was a great thing. We had um, we've got about 70 percent of our student population that say that they want to return them. That's just about just over 5,100 students. But yesterday, some students I'm going to say somewhere close to about 20 percent of those students did not um, come to school. And, and I don't know if it's because it was just one a day this week or, or what it was. But there were several students that did not come yesterday, even though they had the parents had indicated that they wanted the students to return so but all in all it was a good day transportation flowed well uh, lunches and breakfast were served students were were attentive and, and teachers were ready schools were ready so it was a good day on yesterday uh, moving forward I've had a chance to talk with some principals about a full day schedule of course there is some concern about uh, making yet another change and I've gotten emails from parents as well that are concerned about yet another Another, the possibility of another change at this point in the year, but we are working with principals uh, to take a look at those full day schedules update uh, again next week. Next, th tomorrow and Friday will be B, B days. Correct. Um, then I guess we'll have a better handle to see if that's above, you know, not 50 up to 70 or, you know, we get to, because of one day, I can understand being President's Day and, you know, be, I guess within about a week we'll probably really know. I'm just thinking about our burn rate and really how we're going to, how many kids we're going to have, and how do we track the kids that say they're going to, or students are going to come, but don't show up? Are we tracking them as virtual? If they if they get online and do virtual, that's how we take attendance for virtual. So either okay. they're in school per, in person or virtual. So we can do both. So the so the teacher, <clears throat> a, a student, Johnny Smith, supposed to show up on Thursday. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. Then, then she would look for him virtual. Yes, but we do ask the parents to call into the school to let us know if their children are not going to show up. Okay. So that gives the front office some heads up as for the person who does attendance, uh, but also teachers will look for them online because they are teaching simultaneously online, some of them, so, and, and face to face. Or, or, and this might be a loaded question. Are most students with their same teacher? I know we had issues that you know you might not be with your same teacher and stuff. Is that a? I would say most, yes. So we're, that's a, I mean, that was a big concern I heard from parents saying, I want to go back, but I want to have my same, everybody wants everything, and your hands are loose, are tied to a point, but most of them have the same one, so that teacher's familiar with the 18 in their class or yeah. 20 or whatever. Principals made every single effort to ensure that, or, or to make, you know, they made an effort for each student to keep the teacher that they had okay. from the beginning of the school year, um, or at least the beginning of the semester for, for high school students, and so far so good. There are some instances, a, a handful, that were not able to, but um, that is that is just how we had to work it with regard to staffing. And it, you know, I just say again, we need to make sure we stay diligent about you know safety and distances. And if your child ha is sick or has a fever, you know, we just need to be extra cautious now, not sending them to school because um, you know we're getting back and starting to ramp up. I like hearing that we, you know, maybe hopefully in the future we even ramp up more. Um, but it's going to all depend on what people socially responsibility do, and I think that's going to be a big thing both from leaving transportation, school, and back. I mean, it's going to be a be a thing. Our, I, lunches are given to everybody now to take right. home. Correct. 
Everybody it, who wants one. Is that federal or is that us or? That's federal. So we're getting reimbursed for that? Uh, yes, that is the intent. And, and we're not, I know you get reimbursed so you don't have the money up front, but so far we haven't had any major tafus as far as not getting reimbursed. No, there were some delays, you know, because when we started this last year, Thus, last spring, uh, it hadn't been done before, so there had been some changes. So you might recall that we started saying that everybody could eat, and then we went back to saying, you know, not everybody, and, and asking for ID. So it kind of went back and mm -hmm. forth. But it really depends on the directions, the get guidance that we're given. And right now, we've been guided, given guidance to feed everyone. I, I guess my question is, when we do our budget, we're not going to find we got a hole somewhere of a major proportion that we're short on food service money or something you don't think at this time no i don't think that we have okay that. gotcha I'm just, we, we, we can and when miss um towers comes forward she can she can make a comment if i'm not okay. right on that gotcha okay. thank you any other questions from the board hey dr kane um it, i know it was a question before was that we're going to have children in the classrooms and the teacher's going to be teaching remotely any uh, indication of so, how yeah. that's working out? Or? Yep. So we've got 47 subs now acquired um, and just about all of the classrooms where teachers are not going to be physically in the building, we've got about 10 classes that we're still working on. Right now the principals have adjusted their staffing and moved people around in buildings. Um, some are looking at combining classes with one teacher and a special educator and you know and that kind of thing. But the principals are doing their level best to make sure that there is coverage and, and there will be sure. coverage for every class. Okay. Um, the other thing is <clears throat> you mentioned you're talking to the principals about ramping it up, quote unquote, full time uh, or a full day hybrid. Is it possible that we can hopefully by maybe next week, if you can pinpoint when that would be the earliest that that can occur? In, in other words, can we, you know, sort of narrow in a date when that will happen? Are we looking at the first week of May or If it's earlier? the first week of May, it wouldn't make any sense to do that because high school students are going to be out. Well, everybody is going to be out a month after that. Right. So it doesn't make sense to do it the first of May. So we're in either second semester for high school students or the uh, third marking period for, for everybody else. Which starts when? Now. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And so the um When's the end of so the, I'm clear. When's the end of the third marking period? We can look at the we can look at the calendar. But I mean, is that, I mean that, would that be a not that we can, but is that a reasonable date if we were gonna shoot it's, for it's something? It's in March. It's in March. So if we don't if we don't get back to schools in into March, then it's gonna be April, May, you're getting close to the end. Yeah. So what's keeping us right now, just so everybody's clear? So one thing that we have to remember is where are the children going to uh, be for lunch? And some of our principals have gotten creative and they've taken cafeteria tables out of the cafeteria so that they could space kids in the same direction, certain, you know, six feet apart. Um, but if everybody is in the build, all 50% of mm -hmm. A-Day kids are in the building, that's not doable. And we still owe teachers their duty-free lunch and their planning period. So having kids eat in classrooms takes away somebody's lunch. So, you know, we're still trying to work out those kinds of, of things. So we have you know, I did look, and that's actually in the statute, mm -hmm. um, the duty-free yeah. lunch. It's not a contractual it, it's issue. Both. It's both. Um, is it... Uh, can they waive that? Do you know? Is there oh, been any discussion happen. on? And, I, and I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even want that. I, I want teachers to have their duty free lunch, and they need to have their duty free lunch. Regarding the lunches, are are we allowed to have substitutes in, or does it have to be a certified teacher with people? So a substitute comes in lunch? if a teacher is not. So a substitute doesn't. Um, if the teacher is there, then we don't have a sub. A substitute is not a lunch duty person. A substitute is a substitute. Right, but can and we use a substitute? Could we use a substitute for Then lunch? that person would be sort of a lunch aide. We don't have them in all of the buildings. That's because there's an expense to that. So we have staff that rotate, and it's a duty for teachers and a duty for different staff members. So if we're, we're looking at an expense, if we're looking to do that, and, and keep in mind, we still are... <laughs> short subs for the classroom. Okay. I, don't, I don't, I think it's going 
going to be quite a, a lift to ask for subs for lunch duty. With, with all our lunches being, I say bag and go, I guess everybody gets a lunch when they leave and go. So it's already bagged up ready. And I, each one of our schools is, is physically different, I understand. But if you use the gymnasium and the auditorium and the cafeteria, it's three and I, you know, can you do that and eat more? Or, and the, the only problem is in some schools they're using the, caf the gymnasium for classes. Okay. So, so if we're trying to ramp up, and we can't get past this duty-free lunch. What's the solution? There's no solution there. Or is there? Do you have an idea of how to get overcome this? Uh, there's no overcoming the duty-free lunch. There's no overcoming that. We have, you already been to Sudlersville and some teachers there have been willing to allow kids to eat in their classrooms and they're eating with them. Right. That's their good graces and we're grateful for them for doing that. I understand. Yeah. But as a, as a, no, we can't, we cannot do that. So it's and, impossible and we, to go. We wouldn't want to do that. It's, it's impossible then for you to go full-time hybrid. So why are we even discussing? Because you asked us to. Pardon me? Because you asked us to. So I've tasked principals, go back or go look at your schedules. Is there a way we can do it? And some of the smaller schools, it's not as heavy a lift as it is in some of the larger schools. That's the issue. And like Mr. Smith said, there's no way to space them out during lunchtime to get around the, not get around it, but to give the teachers that their statutory lunch. So my, my point is, there's not enough space when we have larger enrollments, right? To have them all in the cafeteria and still abide by the six feet spacing. So, and so, and in those schools, those are the same schools that we're having classes in the gym. So it's not as if we can put kids, take kids out of the, um, the cafeteria and put them in the gym if there are classes going on in the gym. So what if we go down to three foot? social distance yeah. and I know that's I'm not talking about the school I mean the state whatever the powers to be say three feet is the way to go would we be able to go full-time we could look at the, we could certainly look at that all right do the teachers need to have their duty-free lunch in their classroom or could they go so if their kids were in the classroom doing lunch um, would the teachers be able to go someplace else and still have their duty free that's generally what they do. Okay, so could well, we? Well, now that it's COVID and we aren't congregating like we used to, then they probably are in their classroom. Right, so then could we have, does someone have to be in the actual, can the, the doors are open and it, let's say you're on the same floor and I'm just throwing it out there, could somebody, again, I know we don't have a lot of subs, but could a sub walk the halls and check just like they were in a cafeteria, just looking in classrooms to no. cover more students? No, we, we get ourselves in a liability issue there. And, and the Somebody needs lunch, to be in there with the students. It's, it's a 30 minute mm -hmm. duty free lunch period, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question, if you don't mind. Um, have any of the schools, I mean, I know it's been two days, have they reported that being out of any of the PPE um, cleaner? I saw an email today um, with a teacher at Kennard, I believe it is, and Ms. Pullen is coming forward to have a conversation. <laughs> Well, one thing on this trying to get back to a full day, which I think everybody would like to have happen if, if it was feasible, but there's, there's roadblocks in there. There's also, I call a, a moving line, is once you get too far, it's, it's not feasible to do if we get too far in a year. By our meeting in March, each principal of all our schools will have different ideas of how each school can do it. Some can do it, some probably can't. Like you said with the larger schools, there's, there's other challenges, difficulties. But I would think, because it's no use to keep working on this if it's not gonna happen. And we, it, it's awful, it's nice to sit there and talk about it and say we're trying, but unless it's reasonable and can get done, I'm the kind of person that says, it's not gonna happen. I don't wanna have false hope. If we can do it, I want to do it. If we can't because of, of the lunch duty and, and these things, then we might as well sit there and say it's not feasible. And we, we looked at all these options, different places, distancing and all this, but if, if we have to have six foot distancing and we have to have this, this, and this, 
I don't see how it's, I mean, unless. I don't either. It's not feasible. Well, I mean, I, I, I places, mean I, I'm all for asking you to do something. Sure. And, 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 and give you a charge and try to do it. But to give you a charge to do something that's, that's not feasible, you might as well say, hey, it's not going to happen. Well. Call it like it is. And uh, we're just going to have to do what we have to do until metrics change or something. I mean, and other board members can chime in on that. But uh, well, can you, I mean, have you tasked the principals to come up with plans in each of their schools? Absolutely. I've said and, that. I've said that. And, and it's all. And, and they are still working. Yeah. And it is a difficult thing to do. Some places it is just not feasible. But I, I'm not going to say if a principal says, I think we can work it out. In fact, a principal did say to me today, I think we may be able to work it out. But I'm going to have eight cohorts of students versus four. And the idea is to keep cohorts together so that we aren't having kids that contact tracing all over mm -hmm. the place. And we already have, you know, kids have been back for one day and we already have situations and, and that contact tracing is, is, uh, is not the easiest thing to do. So when you've got eight cohorts versus four cohorts, I told the principal, so we have to weigh the pros and the cons, right? And, and just see what makes sense. But there are things that are, are like that as well. So not only the spacing, but there is some issue with, yeah, I could probably do it because all of my 50% of my students aren't coming on those days, but now I've got kids all over the place. And when something happens in terms of a, a, a case that's positive, then there's multiple classes that are going to be quarantined. And, and a word on quarantine, and I'm sure Ms. Bass will say something a, uh, a little bit later. Um, the quarantine is 10 days per MSDE. So CDC says seven days, MSDE says 10. And so we follow MSDE. So th that was a, a question that somebody had earlier today because we do have some quarantine situations already. Can I ask a question, Ms. Morissette? Since you work in this field, um, when I mentioned three foot distancing, I saw a little reaction from you. What's the current status? I mean, is it still six feet distancing according to Maryland? I know that, what's, can you enlighten me a little bit on that? CDC and the state of Maryland, Maryland Department of Health is still six foot and there's no indication that's gonna change anytime soon. Even the World Health Organization is saying six foot. Right. So. And it, it, it would be ideal if they lifted the social distancing and left the mask in place. And then this whole idea of cohorts and all that would ease up and we could open schools 100%, but the social distancing is like the huge roadblock. There's no way to do that and open schools safely and adhere to the rules. And a duty-free lunch. But... So, it, and then, I don't know if it will come up, but if one school's ready and others aren't, that's just going to be a bust nightmare. Right. So you, you can't, can't have. It, that. Yeah, if that can't happen. Do the um, do the plexiglass dividers make a difference with it? I mean, I know that there's some um, establishments, retail, where like nails and hair salons that the chairs are closer than six, but they've put up those barriers. And I uh, some restaurants. So is that something that we can look at? Is to put up um, barriers. I believe the rules for retail are much different than schools. I just, I'm just asking because I'm not familiar with. Yeah, and actually we are looking, and I'll let Ms. Poller speak, but we are looking at uh, more. We already have those barriers, the plexiglass in the front offices, and we're using them in different ways throughout the school. Right. Um, it just depends in the cafeteria. Um, and In fact, we're looking at right now and, and had some samples, Ms. Poller shared with us yesterday, um, for desks possibly or, or, or tables where group work is done. Okay. Okay, thanks. And when we talk about duty-free lunch, that means we owe the teachers 30 minutes basically where they're off duty, right? They're not, you know, yes. well deserved, yes. I'm sure. Yes, yes. Um, okay. And, and, and one thing is, I'm just going to take Central because you have Queen Anne's County High School here. We're tiered, and Carla, you pipe in when I'm wrong. We're tiered so much. I mean, a bus might run the middle elementary school, then it runs another run. So if one school was doing something different than another one, it affects the next one. So you'd have to have the whole tier in that one thing, and I'm sure even some buses probably go from Centerville to Ken Island at some point, don't they? You're correct. And so consistency is the key for 
some varying circumstances, we can make it work as we've done with our 50% to hybrid, but overall we need the consistency of our tier one and our tier two schools or we're not able to make transportation work. And we just take one school out of that <clears throat> tier to have a whole nother system, bus system, not even counting the expense, you don't have the buses to do it. Correct. That's correct. So unless we have, bottom line is unless you can get every school to do it, in, 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 like you said, there's issues at every school. I don't. Under, I mean, it's almost in the, an impossible. I mean, there's just too many variables. To, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I love to have it happen, and I love to sit there and say, Dr. Kane, do it and make it work. But uh, you know, I don't know if you can get five gallons of water in a four-gallon bucket. I can tell you that you can't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know. <laughs> and so, and so, you mentioned Sellersville, and we know that. The principals work with the teachers. The teachers have willingly given up, at least some of them, enough that duty-free lunch period. Um, are, do you know how many, like for each school, have the principals considered how many our teachers are willing to give that up? And if they are, does that relieve, in other words, those kids will eat lunch in the classroom during that half an hour lunch period with their teacher. That would relieve the uh, number of children that would actually have to eat in the cafeteria or elsewhere, you know, in the halls and that kind of thing, without with that other, with their teacher having the duty-free lunch period, you know, uh, free. Um, so it's not an, or is it? All the teachers are. We want our duty-free lunch, meaning all the kids have to go to the cafeteria in a full-day hybrid, or are there some that saying no? We will give it up. We'll stay in the classroom with our kids, and then half of the student body that's there on that A or B day can go to the, the cafeteria. You see what I mean? I, to relieve I, some pressure. I, do. I see what you're saying. Um, and because you are new to um, this public school board situation, uh, I will tell you respectfully, I wouldn't dare in 100 years ask a principal to go ask their teachers to give up their lunch. One, it's violating the negotiated agreement. And yes, two, it violates the state law. And I would never put a principal, nor would I, ask a teacher to give up your lunch. If they came to me and they said they wanted to do it, bravo, thank you, we so, we're so grateful to you. But that's on them, mm -hmm. that's their choice. Nobody is, and I direct no one to ask a teacher to give up their duty-free lunch. Sure, but those, I'm sure there are some have come and said, you know, well, I don't know if, if they're aware of it or, or not, but. They've got quite a bit on them, teachers do right now. And sure. their 30 minutes is just 30 minutes, and I can guarantee you they're not eating for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. They are preparing for the next thing, just like they do all the time. Certainly. So whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, that 30 minutes is generally 15 or 20. So no, I, I, I don't think that the majority of them would give up that time, nor should they. And, and you know, I think it boils down to like last year when we had a, a budget issue, some of our units gave up their increases because we were getting ready to lose staff. Unit unit two did. Gave, gave up their, and, and, and uh, the administrators. administrators gave up. Uh, but that was not asked by the board, that was volunteered Correct. by that group. Correct. It, it was appreciated by the board and it, it made things work a lot and we and we appreciate that. But we we did not go and say, we need you to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they came and volunteered that, which helped us out immensely. Uh, so it has to be, I think, the, and I agree with Mark, I mean, the, but there, there are certain rules, and but they came to us and I think that's the way we you know, need to keep it as much as we would like to have it open. And you know, looking at it too, I, <laughs> It's a lot of variables in this, and it's just not all in one thing. So I think we have to really look at the big picture. We uh, we're back, and I think we're going. I'm, I'm hoping too. Once in another couple of weeks, things might get even better. Maybe the state could go to one foot or something. You know, you never. I tell know. you, it would be absolute heaven if they <laughs> lifted social distancing and less than so many people in a space, and it would make life a whole lot easier. Right, but. Just for general purposes, it's this is coming from Hogan, right? The six feet distance. Is this one of the executive orders? State mandate. All right. And then on the other hand, he's saying get the kids back in school. Correct. But those mandates were not removed. But follow the six foot mandate. Right. And so many, only so many in a, in a space, I believe it's 15. Well, it depends on how big the space is. Okay. So you still have those mandates in place. It's hard to make the moving pieces work when these walls 
are in certain places that won't move. If I and, and, and Hogan doesn't, I mean, nothing against Governor Hogan. He can say do something, but if he doesn't untie your hands, it's like telling you to jump in six foot of water with your hands tied and don't drown. Well, fine, I jumped into water you told me to, but don't tie my hands, I can't swim. But, but I also don't think that he, he said get kids back in school and we've gotten kids back in school. He didn't say get kids back in school face to face for seven hours. He said get kids back in school. No, but I, I think that the thing and the whole thing, I think even administrators, teachers, parents, everybody want to see kids back at as much as I mean they learn better in school and that's what we need to do we just can't get them back there because of restrictions that we have you know and you know I mean Governor Hogan and, and the state superintendent says get back get back get back but you know there's a lot of little devils in the details sometimes and I'm not saying they pushed it too far but they they, they give a perception that we can, we can do it but you know your one's got to make it work and our staff you know so it's tough just to address Mrs. Harper's question about PPE, we are still fully stocked on PPE at this time. We have reports from the schools that everyone has exactly what they need. We received an email today that indicated there was some more disinfectant that was required. It was the first we had gotten that request and we delivered that to that school this afternoon. Um, there is nothing that we are out of. There is nothing that we don't have reserves of. We're ready to deliver things. And for the most part, within one to two days, we have any of the school's requests down to them. I mean, you know, it's, it's like everything. I, I go in the, in the bathroom, the soap's missing. You know what I mean? I forgot to put it in when I left last time. Do the teachers understand that, you know, the person that's in charge of that at the, each school, do the teachers go to that or do the teacher go to the principal? Is, or is each, each school different? Each school is different. We have a lead custodian in each building and the ideal way that that would be handled is that the lead custodian is notified. Typically, it is as simple as a teacher or staff member saying something is out in that restroom and we have a custodian there to address it immediately. So it's commute. I mean, it's as much communication it's, it's as it is. It's the communication. You're correct. Uh, question, Dr. Kane. So you received the email that we all mm -hmm. got this afternoon, so that all those items are being taken care of. We don't have to go any further. It's, it's done, and it, it's and when we say communication, I think that if that person had communicated with their principal, their principal would have made us aware. It, we're out of nothing, so it, it doesn't have anything to do with transparency or or this team saying anything that's not accurate, because we report what we know, not what we think. Uh, so if somebody has some issue, they should, the first step is talk to your principal. Okay. The board can't put wipes in the classroom, but your principal can. Thank you. Uh, but, and, you know, and little things are going to happen. There are going to be bumps in the road. I'm sure <clears throat> all teachers get f frustrated to a point when, you know, they're trying to do all this. And, you know, maybe the last one got taken and nobody reported it. I mean, it's just, it happens. So I think we just, like you said, just got to, look, you're, but these things are going to pop up. We just got to address them and, uh, you know, just work at it. Can I ask about the buses? Yes. So uh, how did most of the school, how did all the schools make out? I mean, I'm sure there were some kind of snafus here and there. As is typical in a normal school year, there are always hiccups the first day and it's typically with communication errors. We did hear some rumblings on Monday uh, that there were still some parents that were concerned that they hadn't heard from bus drivers yet. We got communication out to the bus drivers and calls started flowing once again. Um, as far as we could tell and as far as what was reported, transportation went very well for the first day. Um, we will hopefully have a second first day tomorrow with our BB groups. We will see if the weather cooperates with that. And this week, again, is just a chance for us to iron some of those minor issues out. But at this point, we did not have any major issues with any parts of transportation. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Might as well sit there. So we're opening, everybody has all questions for opening schools. Everybody, we're all happy. Or, okay. And thank you for, anyway, I want to thank the teachers and the principals for what they've done. I mean, because, you know, like, like Carla said, this, you know, March was a year ago. We haven't been in school. It's not like you just got out in June, a couple months, and you're back in, in, in the end of August. And then this has been a whole year of a very volatile 
uh, situation. Um, and to come back with, you know, I, in all fairness, I didn't get many emails. And, I, you know, usually you get them, but I'm sure you get them copied too. Um, I think they did a stellar job. So I want to thank the principals and the teachers for what they're doing and the bus drivers and everybody because it's a, you know, it's, 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 it's daunting and it's, you know, you know a lot, and a lot of kids are going to the school for the first time. You know, you're going, you know, the middle school is going to high school, the elementary school to middle school. Some of the elementary schools are like in Centerville are going from, you know, second to third grade. So um, it's, 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 to me, from what I'm hearing right now, it's been pretty impressive of how it's going. Do we want to make it better and do we want to move forward? Yes, but we got to be thankful for what we've done and where we are right now. And you walk through any of those schools and you will see our custodial staff out and doing high traffic areas. They are busy and cafeteria staff. They are Sodexo. They are handing out breakfast. They're handing out lunches. They are greeting kids when they come into the cafeteria. It's, uh, it's good to see and it's good to see the smile. So I'm we're sure. grateful for all of the employees who are Everybody's helping. glad to get back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Carl. Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, 2-03 budget review. Is that where we? That's where we are. Yes. So we're going to go over today the capital budget. As you know, you have gotten lots of information. We have gone methodically through the operating budget, uh, step by step, had conversations about uh, items that are about a percent and a half, either over or below um, the, the allotment. And now we're going to go through the capital budget. And, uh, and then we're going to talk about some staffing and uh, as we as we always do at the end we will tell you what we're how we're moving next week and allow opportunity for questions so at this point miss Pullen. thank you good evening everyone for the record my name is carla Pullen. i'm serving as the interim chief operating officer for queen anne's county public schools And this evening, I am here to give you an overview of the fiscal year 2022 capital budget requests. So the first thing I would like to start with is to review a little bit with you where we were with our capital requests for fiscal year 2021, just a little bit of a history of where we came from. This first slide projects, uh, these are the projects that were eligible and approved for 51% of our state match for construction funding. These are our capital projects with the state and we do get 51% of the eligible costs for construction from the state as well. We had four project requests last year. They were all systemic, almost $3 million for those four systemic projects were funded through the county. Every year we are required to submit a capital improvement program to the state and that projects our capital funding needs for the next seven years. The sheet that I gave you this evening just as you were seated is the summary page that we use for our capital improvement program. This was presented to the board as well as to the state back in October. And Kenlon High School, wasn't that a two-year project or something? That's correct. It's a two-year project. I'll get to that a little bit okay, in sorry. this year because it is something that we've requested for state funding. It was not fully funded last year, so it is part of our state request this year. In fiscal year 2021, we requested $2 million for the planning and design of the central office building. That request was not funded at the county level. You say we requested it, but they also gave direction to a point That's that they, they wanted to move it forward too. So, I mean, not that it wasn't a cooperative effort, but the commissioners also asked about that at one time. Yes, that. they suggested it. Suggested it, they right. So, I mean, that. you know, we suggested it, we move that, and now it's thing. That's okay. correct. The next slide is the combined categories for our comprehensive building assessment. These categories follow those that are outlined in the building facility assessment that we had done on all of our buildings in 2016. 
Building services includes things like HVAC, plumbing, lighting, any of our interior systems within a building. Building shell is the exterior of the building. It's our roofing, windows, doors. Interior repairs, typically painting, flooring, any interior finishes. We look at replacement blinds under that category. Site work is our asphalt. These are very large dollar numbers when we talk about replacing and paving our parking lots. It also can include landscaping or grading at any of our buildings. And the substructure repairs are the building foundations. We requested 1.7 million. We were funded by the county at 804,000 and that is 124,000 less than the previous year and what we received for our comprehensive building assessment. Does your site work also include sidewalks? Yes. Other categories that we look at in our capital allocations are athletics and the needs for those programs. Classroom building technology replacement. These are our projectors, our smart boards, our sound systems. They're separate equipment from what ComTech, our IT specialists do for us. We have custodian equipment replacement, fleet vehicle replacement. Over the past few years, we have started to replace our fleet of maintenance trucks, of our vans for distributive services, our, for food service. Some of these vehicles are 20 years old, so we are in a process of replacing those. Food service equipment replacement. We have aging equipment in many of our kitchens. Um, furniture replacement. The easiest way that we have right now to bring many of our classrooms up to 21st century learning is to replace the furniture with more flexible and movable pieces. Furniture replacement is something that you'll continue to see in our requests each year. Maintenance equipment replacement, items that we need for our maintenance team. Miscellaneous projects includes things like soccer goals for the schools to utilize at recess. Stage curtains in many of our buildings have never been replaced. We have our PA intercom systems, our phone system replacements. These are life safety issues. Any of those fall into grants or anything? They do. Okay. They do. And we have several other state programs that we utilize as well. Graysonville Elementary School is currently having their PA system replaced right now, and that was through the aging schools funds through the state of Maryland. We have playground replacements as playgrounds age, they become unsafe, they need to be removed. In the recent years, we have not had funding to replace those items. Security upgrades include our cameras, security cameras, our door access, door keying projects, window film for security, and fencing. Transportation, yearly, we replace buses, we also look at needs for security and safety on the buses. Our technology plan is the five-year plan that is outlined by Mr. Combs and ComTech for our student devices as well as all of our staff devices within the buildings. And we also look at our CNI needs for textbooks. Last year, we requested 5.4 million in those other categories. We were funded just under 3 million. So that means the technology gets taken care of first. Okay. The items that were not funded last year typically move up to the top. Okay. So here are some of the larger unfunded items from fiscal year 2021. Planning and design of the central office building. We have some sandblasting and painting projects that need to happen at the canopies at Ken Island High School. The interior painting project for Bayside Elementary School has had to be pushed out. The flooring replacement, the continuation of this at Ken Island High School, the track resurfacing at Ken Island High School, the request for an athletic storage building to replace the one that is in disrepair at Queen Anne's County High School, kitchen equipment in many of our buildings, furniture replacement throughout the district, the PA systems, the intercom systems, the telephone systems, and playgrounds are the most notable. When you say furniture replacement, some of, we do some of it, we just weren't fully funded, right? I mean, because I mean, for the most years, part, we don't receive any funding for furniture. But we, we put money some into that because I mean, we've had cafeteria tables, we've had issues with. We are still we, in. We get, we in, get all kinds of issues with desks and tables and. Correct. 
if there's an immediate need, it's usually funded through another category somehow or funds are transferred. But in the last several years, we have not received any funding for furniture replacement. Some of the furniture that we're utilizing is the original to the building. Yeah. And that was one of the areas that uh, was um, a significant need on the survey, budget survey. If, if this year we end up with a surplus of, you know, in certain areas, um, you know, due to what the thing, we might or might not, but let's say we do, we're going to end up with something. Can that be used for, I mean, that's a one-time cost to me. And if that's a priority, would that be something we could do some of our one-time funding with? Would be my, you know, idea. I'm looking at Ms. Tower shaking her head. Um, <laughs> but in general, I think that, you know, it's been said before, but I have never known a school district or any organization with the numbers of people that come through it that don't have an allocation for furniture. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is, that is, that's something that absolutely needs to be corrected. In fiscal year 2021, 20, the projects that have been completed so far, we've been able to purchase our replacement buses as well as our replacement fleet vehicles that were funded. We've done large scale replacements of sinks and countertops in Bayside Elementary School, Kennard Elementary School, and Ken Island High School. There was locker room paint and flooring replacement at both of our high schools, a water heater replacement at Bayside Elementary, painting of the lockers as well as some of the interior classrooms at Kennard Elementary School, lighting upgrades at several buildings, classroom technology at Mattapique Elementary School, and an asphalt repair and replacement project at Churchill Elementary. We still have some upcoming projects to do this summer. We'll be doing the interior painting of the entire building at Mattapique Elementary School. We will be completing some of the asphalt at Queen Anne's County High School. There are keying and door lock projects at both of our high schools, replacement of the chiller at Sellersville Elementary, replacement of the fire alarm at Sellersville Elementary. The roof replacement will begin at Ken Island High School, window and door replacement at Bayside Elementary School and repairs to portables throughout the district. Do we own our portables, all of them now? Yes, we do. So we don't rent anything. We, we do own. not lease any longer. So let's go to fiscal year 2022. For our capital state funding match projects, this is, if you recall, the state funds 51% of the eligible construction costs, and this was requested in our CIP outlined back in October. The one project that we will be requesting from the commissioners to fund this year is the partial roof replacement at Kennard Elementary School in the amount of 852,000. At the state level, we have two projects that have been requested. One is the uh, replacement of the roof at Ken Island High School. We are getting the remaining of the funding from the state this year because it was not fully funded last year. However, the commissioners did fully fund that project last year in last fiscal their, their year. Their portion of it. Their portion of it. So that money is available and waiting for us as soon as it's approved by the state. We have gotten the 90% certainty that we'll be getting both of those projects and the funding from the state. County only funding requests. These are ones that are not eligible for state funding through the state of Maryland. We are looking at the idea of the planning and design of the central office building or the need for central office repairs. So as you mentioned, Mr. Smith, after collaboration with the commissioners, there was indication that we would hope for either the renovation or a new building for the central office. We completed the feasibility study this past year. We requested the funding for the planning and design project last year, as you've already seen, and it was not funded. We're bringing this back this year because we wanna discuss your thoughts and we wanna get some direction on this request. If we do not take the planning and design of the central office building to the commissioners, then we really need to begin repairs on this building. We have $3 million worth of requests, either $3 million for the planning and design of the central office building or 
$3 million to begin to repair some of the things that need to happen desperately within this space. Repair on a central office, how long will that last? What I'm saying is... In terms of the projects or... No, if, if we put $3 million in this, are we then good for another 10 years? No. No. So the uh, facility assessment that was done in 2016 showed in 2016 there was an immediate need for $3 million with a need for $5 million over the next five years. We've already gotten there. Within 10 years, we were at $10 million. So we were almost at the cost of a new building. There are many things that just due to the age of this building and the the last time there were any renovations that happened that really need to take place here. And, and I've asked this before, are we considering, because we have Centerville Middle School in the, in the books to have something done, either renovation or a new school, Correct. which both of you pretty much are the same cost. Are we, is, there, is there any sympathetic consideration that they might use the Centerville Middle School as our you know, build another middle school, move those kids over there, renovate the school, take parts of it away, make it to the board office, you know, is there any? Uh, yes, so it's something that we have looked at and will continue to look at as we do the feasibility study at Centerville Middle School. The issue that we come up against is that with two very large entities on the same site, and what we would anticipate right now is that Centerville Middle School stays where Centerville Middle School is. In the conversations that we've had with the commissioners, there is no other land that's available at this time for another middle school. But you say in this area? in this area. If we were to look outside of this area, then we have another full process that we have to do with the state of Maryland to assess sites. So that would bring in some additional cost. It would also bring in additional time to that project to assess the sites and uh, the feasibility for moving that. How many that. acres do they need for a middle school? It's dependent upon a lot of things. Um, one would be the footprint of the building. If we have a one-story building, it's going to be larger as larger than a two-story footprint would be. We also have to look at the playing fields, and that's where we start to get into a little bit of trouble if we consider moving the central office to that site, mainly because if we move the middle school, if we were to construct a new one, let's say, we leave all of the students in place, we can construct a middle school somewhere else on the site, and then we move this building to that location, we don't have play fields anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be something that will be heavily looked at in terms of state funding there, and what I mean, the state will there participate is adjoining, in. There is adjoining land to that property. I don't know if it's obtainable, but there is adjoining land to that property. And that's a conversation, if that's something that you're interested in bringing up with the commissioners, there's always room for more discussion. It, it, the past few years when we've had that discussion so far, we haven't gotten an answer in the affirmative. When we say acreage for a middle school, I mean 10 acres, 20 acres, 50 acres? I, mean, I, know I would have store, to know, look. For some reason, I'm thinking that site is 11 acres. 11, so 20 in, in acres. That area. 20 acres. Mm -hmm. 11 usable, 20 acres or something would be could be feasible. Right. Certainly. So again, we are looking at either the planning and design of the central office building and we'll have more conversations with you about that or the repairs that we would request here. And just to give you an idea of the repairs, we're looking at the roof, which needs to be replaced. It is slate and it's part of a historic building. The full HVAC repair and replacement that includes the boilers, which we've recently had some trouble with, and the window and door replacement. We have um, much work that needs to be done with our windows here. The last part of this county only funding piece is 150,000 for the expansion of the health suites at Graysonville Elementary School and at Kennard Elementary School. They are undersized due to the number of students that we have in those buildings. Well, and you mentioned the, the almost a million a year in repairs and when you did your, so what were you anticipating a new building costing? It's about $15 million. So the feasibility took a look at three different scenarios. It looked at the renovation of this building as is. It looked at the renovation of this building, incorporating a Rise Academy into the space as well. And then it looked at a new building. The 
numbers were all very, very close. Essentially, the cheapest option by about a million dollars was a new office building. Was that a firm fixed, <coughs> or would they be able to do overruns if they ran into issues? Would that, was that a firm fixed cost from whatever we got our bids? That was what they would anticipate based on the current market. So we were going to pay 20% for planning and design of it. That's about typical. Are there no other central buildings anywhere on the eastern shore that we could just, because normally your plans cost between 10 and 15% of what your building is, and if you could save that cost by buying an already set of plans that you could maybe... That's a potential we have not explored, okay. and that was not something that was in the conversation with the commissioners either. Thank you. Yep. All right, moving on to our next slide. We are looking again at the comprehensive building assessment piece. Building services, building shell, interior repairs, site work, and substructure repairs. The total requested for 22 is about 1.4 million. In past years, the commissioners have reached out and asked us to give them a steady number for this category so they know each year about what we will need for our building assessment items. And 1.4 is the mark that we hit for this section every year. In our other categories, again, the same that you saw in fiscal year 21 in the requests, many of these items are repeated as they were not funded last year, and we will go through these in a little bit more depth. Other categories continued through our security upgrades, technology plan, textbooks, the number that we've arrived at is right about five million as the total request for our other categories. And again, we will go into these in a little greater depth. Is a, is a technology, of, do they like a fixed plan for that too? Yes, and there is a five-year plan that Mr. Combs continues to update as to how. They give them a five-year thing to show yes. what our technology, because Correct. I'm assuming our textbooks go down a little bit in our technology. I mean, because there's more things technology online and stuff. I know you have licensing, which is textbooks that cost, but I mean, I would think that's something that's gonna happen every year. You know. We'll talk a little bit about that, and I believe Mrs. Towers talked about that a little bit last week as well, that in that textbook line item, are there other things that are acceptable, such as licensing, such as digital textbooks, that we could continue to explore? Okay. So our overall request for fiscal year 2022, we have 852,000 for that capital and state fund match. That's for Kennard Elementary School. 6.1 million was our county only funding. That number, depending on what the board gives us direction to do, will be reduced by about 3 million because remember, again, that's either planning for the central office building or the repairs. Both of those are at $3 million, so we will see a reduction in cost there. The comprehensive building assessment, again, right at that 1.4 million mark, about 3.1 million for our other categories, and for our CNI categories, we're about 1.9 million for an overall total of 13 million as stands here. Again, we will see a reduction of about $3 million based on the direction that we're given. When we look at the comparison between fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21, in fiscal year 20, we requested about 4.9 million, 2.1 million was unfunded of that request. And in fiscal year 21, we requested 6.7 million and were funded 5.5 million less than we requested. So what does that tell us? The average of funding between 20 and 21 was about 4.4 million. We're extremely grateful for the help that the commissioners have given us. And that money goes toward replacing aging equipment and repairs for schools that are 20 years or older. But as you know, anything that's deferred just increases the need for funding requests the next year. As we talked about in previous slides, the funding here is primarily going to repairs and to replacement items. There are not new programs or additional things that we are asking for. It's just to maintain what we currently have. 
I can stop here for questions. I'd also like to go through our detail sheet that was also included that breaks out each of the requests by category. It gives you an idea of what we are requesting for each category as well as an explanation as to why we need to take a look at these projects at this particular time. The first page of this document which is a detailed document, is the same breakdown of categories that we just outlined in the presentation. So our capital state fund match, the county only funding projects, our comprehensive building assessment projects, all of our other categories, and our CNI requests. Page two starts to break everything down. We talked about the need for our capital state funding match, Kennard Elementary School, that partial roof replacement. The county funded projects, we start to get into a little bit more detail. We talk in the first column about, our first row, about the planning and design for the central office and basically a little bit more logistics about this building and what we're dealing with. If we choose to go the route of the repairs, we have the slate roof, we have the HVAC replacement and the window and wood, the wood window and door replacement, and then our health suite expansions. We then get into our comprehensive building assessment. We're looking at some HVAC replacement. Kennard Elementary School, this goes hand in hand with the project that we are requesting state funding for as we replace the roof. It's the ideal time to replace the air handlers as well as we're disturbing the roof and putting everything back together as one. Graysonville Elementary School, air conditioning units. At this time, the kitchen in Graysonville is the only one that does not have air conditioning. It can be pretty stifling for the staff that's there. We attempted to do air conditioning when we built the addition in 2018. It was a, about $500,000 additional to the project to do that, so it was abandoned at that time. So this would just give a little bit of relief. There are some water heater replacements and HVAC controllers that have aged that we would like to replace as well. Miss um, Paul, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Are, are you on page three? Yes. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, page three. a question three. about the LED lighting. Re, re, um, yes. Have, I did speak to Delmarva because I know they have business um, plans that replace yes. for L, free of charge. Have we looked into? Yes, we are currently working with Delmarva for a number. They offer grant programs, mm -hmm. and it actually goes up to a million dollars per school. Some of those are matches. It depends, the percentage of the match depends on what the product is and if it's already been vetted through Delmarva Power, but they do offer some fabulous rebates, and we are working with them. <laughs> yes. So with our building shell projects, as mentioned, some LED lighting retrofits. Um, LED is a much more cost efficient lighting source and we are slowly hoping to migrate to that in all of our buildings. We have brick repointing and repair, some roof repairs, the sandblasting and painting of the canopy at Kent Island High School that I mentioned before, uh, as well as um, the overhang that is in the back of the administration area that we would like to blast and paint. Interior repairs, we're going to get Bayside Elementary School back on the schedule for interior painting. <coughs> we're going to continue to replace VCT flooring at Ken Island High School. There are smaller areas of interior painting that we would like to do, excessive wear in bathrooms, in areas of classrooms that there has been a tear in the drywall or something of that nature. There are small areas uh, that we try to do every summer. And then the idea that clocks, now that we are on satellite systems in many of our areas, it would be great to be able to synchronize the clocks in all of our buildings so that none of them have to be moved manually during daylight savings. Site work projects, the majority here includes asphalt repair and replacement. You can see that those are very large dollar items. We typically are not fully funded in this category every year, so therefore 
they become deferred maintenance projects and we continue to just request. So I had a question about that because they were saying that asphalt is 20 to 30 years and we're still within that. How was the bid process for the, how was that put out for the asphalt? Companies? So typically what we do, we use a contract or at least the past few asphalt projects that we have um, secured have been done through a cooperative purchasing contract called SourceWell, which I believe used to be the U.S. Communities contract. So it is a pre-bid contract that government entities are able to piggyback on and utilize their services as well. So this 200,000, um, is that for a complete replacement no, or is it's that not. just for partial? That's just for it? partial, yes. So we found that at our elementary schools, they are in the area of 150,000. Um, high schools are gonna be closer to 500,000 by the time we do all of them. So we know that we will have to do these in, in stages. Thanks. Yes. Bus loop repairs at Churchill Elementary School. We realized as we were paving this summer that there are some drainage issues that we need to take care of. We do have pricing for that and wanted to bring that back so that we can take care of that sooner rather than later. And there are some tennis court repairs at both Sudlersville Middle School, Ken Island High School, where we're starting to see some cracking in the courts that eventually could become a tripping hazard. So we'll be taking care of that as soon as we can. The only substructure project that we have is a lift station identified by the facility assessment that will need to happen at Kennard Elementary School. Next, we start to get into our other categories. We look at athletics first. We requested money to resurface the track last year. This was also part of our turf field project that we've been working with the county on and continue to upgrade parts of our stadium that were not done when the field, uh, the turf fields were put into place. Uh, just a sidebar on that, Ms. Pullen. That track has needed help, needed repair for several years. And yes. the track and field coach and the students even have said what a hazard it is running on that, especially when we have matches from other schools there too. It's just, it is it's a hazard. As well as the lines need to be updated. So they're I not mean, I know all of visible. this is necessary. I just, right there, just the safety issue. Yes. Yes. So they take care of that. I mentioned to you earlier the storage building that was not funded at Queen Anne's County High School. This is for the equipment, uh, mostly the outdoor equipment that is stored that will fall into disrepair if it's left out in the weather. And then both high schools have requested some weight room improvements. The weight rooms are heavily utilized, especially at the high school level, and this would give uh, new equipment as well as updated equipment in and, both of these. And again, how was that done with, I assume you're talking just weight equipment machines. How was that, um, where did they go to get the machines? Like this one has not been procured yet, so we're just asking for funding. We have not identified yet how that would be done. There are a couple of different ways, whether or not we use cooperative purchasing, whether we put together a bid and actually bid that to interested How did they come contractors. Up with the Fifty thousand was that just a? That is. Let's see what we can do with that okay. amount of money. Okay. Yeah. Classroom building and technology, this is a static number that we ask for just about every year as well. And if you remember, this is just so we can replace some of that digital equipment in the classrooms that's so heavily relied upon now for digital learning. These are interactive boards, our LCD projectors. The projectors only have a lifespan of about five years. Those bulbs go bad and it's more economical to actually replace the projector than it is to replace the bulb. Custodial equipment, these are items that were requested last year. The one addition here is additional electrostatic sprayers. They are working fabulously for us for disinfection purposes. We found that we could utilize many more of them and it would make it much more efficient, um, potentially for use in the nurse's station, so they would have one. Um, so there's a request for those as well. Could we use some of those ESSER funds for the sprayers? We are also hoping that that's a possibility we are looking at it in both places and then hopefully one of those will will get funded and how about the vacuums couldn't that also be seeing that it's it Potentially, there are some line items for um, custodial supplies, preventing the spread of communicable diseases. So we can take a look at that. And I know we do have some other um, custodial equipment that's been requested there. 
fleet vehicles. We have several fleet vehicles that were funded last year, but not fully funded. So this year we are looking at uh, a bucket truck, which was requested last year. So right now we borrow Department of Public Works. It can be inconvenient, especially for our outdoor lights when we find that we have something out and we have to put it on the schedule. That parking lot or building is not lighted until we're able to borrow that. Can I ask a question about that bucket truck? So yep. what height are we talking about? What height do you need a bucket? To that I would have to us? ask. It, it, the specifics about that, I would ask our maintenance foreman. And then how um, often are we needing to borrow PW? I know that it, it, monthly would be ideal. I don't believe that they actually get that one monthly. Because you know, we can, you can rent them for about we 400 can. a day. We can. Okay. So what we found with renting, because we do that with a number of uh, other large pieces of equipment, um, the numbers can be pretty staggering. And as an example, we rented a, an indoor lift for a ceiling project that we needed to complete. It was a plaster ceiling. The rental was around $2,500. We had to take that down, return it. The plaster had to dry. We brought it back so they could sand. We took it down again. We brought it back one more time after the plaster dried so that it could be painted. So those are the type of things that we're trying to see if purchase in the long run will be uh, much more efficient and much more fiscally responsible than doing the rentals. So, and they need the, the bucket truck versus like an electric lift. Is it just for one parking lot? No, this would be for all of, all of our them? facilities. Okay, yes. and have, are we able to look at used? Because I don't, oh, Iron absolutely. Planet has an awful lot of used bucket trucks. Okay. Yes, absolutely. We'll look at all facets of that. And the bucket truck is just for exterior. We'll talk a little bit more uh, about our interior requests for maintenance as well. We have two uh, utility trucks that are replacements for our maintenance vehicles that are requested here. And those are replacing trucks that are 20 years old and have over 250,000 miles. We have an F-250 that is requested. That would replace one of the vehicles that currently is used for our warehouse staff, our transportation staff. And that would be um, a truck that would be able to have a plow attachment on the front, and that way we could take care of the warehouse facility on our own. Ms. Pollen, they have as part of the reason um, as costs for repairs are increasing, and of course we, we know that happens when you get an older vehicle. Do we have a formula for at what point do we look like, I would be interested, how much were the yearly costs for these vehicles for the repairs last year? I can certainly get that for you. I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, I can tell you at this time, we don't have a formula that we utilize because okay. it has been 20 years since we've replaced many of these. What we're trying to do is get back on a cycle and we hope that once they're all replaced, we're gonna get 20 years out of them again. And so this won't continue to be a recurring cost. If but we'll get you give, some of those If figures. you're gonna give us a call, of repairing vehicles, we have to take them there and bring them back. Yes. So there's, a, you know, we have a, sh a managed shortage too to take somebody either to sit there for eight hours while it's getting worked on or two people to go down there and bring them back. So, you know, give us a, it's just not the $2,000 repair bill. It might be another $300 for staff to be out of the, you know, working on that. So Correct. I'd like to get, you know, make sure we not inflate anything, but give us actual cost. Sure. We'll include that as well. The next category that we get to is food services. Most of these items were included last year in last year's requests and they were not funded. As you can see, some of our equipment is coming up on 30 years. We continually need to replace these items as they are unfunded. The needs just continue to grow every year. So many of what you will see here is just um, at the time of funding, we will see what is in most dire need to replace. Ms. Pollen, how old is Kennard? Kennard? Not the, not the addition, but the building itself. I can remember if it was in the night, it was after Bayside. I don't know off the top of my head, but I will get I remember you. It, yeah. I, Bayside was in 90, 91. I think it was uh, like the early 2000s, to think but I can't recall if that is the addition or if that is the original structure. I went to the opening of the addition or the, the, the ceremony for that, and that was in 2004.
14, so probably 2,000, Kennard. That sounds right. Okay. And what I'll do, I am, I already have an email composed to you based on the questions about the CIP tonight for our new board members. I'm going to forward you the capital improvement program link that we sent to the state in uh, October so that you can take a look. In that document, there's a page that outlines um, the state rated capacity for all our buildings, the year it was built, the year the additions were put on, I'll include that and I'll let you know what page that's on so you can go take a look at just the age of all of our structures. The reason why I ask is because it says here, Kennard Elementary, the health department has noted that some of these need, units need to be replaced. I was just wondering how, if it's, 20, well, I can see 20 year old equipment. Be, right, we're, I mean, we're definitely coming up on 20 year equipment. It's it's no younger than that. And the same thing with Mad Peak Elementary School. I mean, that was opened in 2003. 2004. 2004. Yeah, 2004. So that's. We're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Regarding the, um, the alert for the power outage, so how many times in the last year did we lose, it says we lost product and? I'm gonna say five or six. And depending on the size of that walk-in, we do reimburse Sodexo if it's something that was unavoidable on our end and they lose all of the food. Um, it happens more times than we would like it to, for sure. And that's where having that alert, um, we would know immediately, we could go unload that freezer and take it to another school, and then we, we'd be able to salvage everything that was inside. Okay. The next category, we are looking at furniture replacement. So for the past several years, cafeteria tables have been the things that really come to light. All of the schools are starting to see cafeteria tables that have extended past their useful life. We have tried to repair them through maintenance. We have tried to do things through our custodial staff and there is definitely a need for replacement. So we are requesting funds for those again. There were requests that came in from the schools. In some cases, the teacher's chairs and the chairs that are used in the clusters are 20 and 25 years old. The padding has gone, the fabric has worn through, there are no armrests anymore. So they've requested the potential for funding to replace some of those items. Are all of these things, the tables and the chair, are these all gonna be part of that flexible furniture replacement that you're talking about? Is it a different We would definitely of? look at that, yes. So uh, there's a lot of difference between the ergonomics of a chair that was specified in 1998 as to what is specified now. So certainly we would be looking at better ergonomics for our classrooms. Yes, anything that um, is more flexible, is able to be used in different ways, that is modeling the 21st century classroom thinking. And that is the last item that we've included here as well. The 21st century updates, we would probably be able to do about two elementary schools with $100,000. Um, it would be a great start to getting those updates in some of the buildings. Maintenance equipment, here's where we come back to our indoor lifts. There are sky jacks um, as well as forklifts that are getting up there in years and we know that at some point they will need to be replaced. The miscellaneous items that we talked about, these are school requests that don't necessarily fit into one of those other categories. Our soccer goals, these are things that the schools request so that they can utilize them for recess or for some of their PE classes. The auditorium drapes uh, Queen Anne's County High School that is 40 years old at this point. The light board in the auditorium, 22 years old, that makes it difficult for their theater productions. And also we see requests for marquees, the signage that's out front of each of the buildings. At this time, we have opted not to go digital. That would be a request of all of our buildings if they could, but the expense is much, much greater than the standard signage that you would see. Before we do that, we better look at zoning. I was about to say, but the digital, don't they 
they want like a still message, not something. They can't, yeah, they can't, especially they can't in the town of Center. It can't be changed so many times. And uh, yeah, it can be changed. Yeah, just can't start. Although I'm thinking that um, uh, sponsorships, you know, you have a business or two willing to. Uh, sponsor each of those yeah, but, digital. But, but remember, most of our schools are in municipalities. I mean, Ken Island's a different animal. Mm -hmm. But when you take Centerville, Churchill, Southersville, you know, they're in a municipality, so we're, t we're dealing with a different zoning, not the county. That's correct. I thought that digital zone was out of just planning and zoning for the entire Queen Anne's County, was it not? I would not suggest Queen Anne's County has a authority over Centerville. Well, no, they're definitely their own opinion. municipalities, that's for sure. No, yeah, it does differ yeah. between the municipalities and what they've allowed for fire stations and some of the other. Mm -hmm. We go back to PA and intercom systems. Again, these are life safety issues. They are ones that traditionally have not been funded or at least not much funding has been allotted as well as our phone system replacements. Some of these are coming up on 25, 20 years old as well. The technology of those systems has changed so much since then. And there are so much more capabilities that we can do with our newer systems. On the, like the PA and phone systems, if we can get a grant for that, I know you look at that first. Because we do. Of safety and some federal grant come out and say we need school safety and it can fall under some of that. Yep, and our aging school programs, for the last two years we've been able to do PA replacements at Kent Island High School and Graysonville Elementary School under that program with the state. Playgrounds, if you take a look at those numbers, they are very expensive. The large play sets are very ex expensive, but we are currently working uh, Churchill Elementary School and Sellersville Elementary School. Two years ago, we had to remove their two to five year old playground set due to disrepair and inability to get parts. So therefore, these have been on for the last several years as well. Um, we would like to be able to replace the equipment as we have to take it out. Portables, we did have uh, a significant amount of portable funding last year that allowed us to do exterior repairs such as siding and skirting and roofing on the portables. We do need to turn our focus to the aging finishes and the building components inside as well because that's a standard repair um, that we have to do every so often. How many portables do we have in the county now? I believe it's 27, 27. at this point. And that's 27 units because I remember That's 27 one time units. There's no quads anymore, no. there's no four. It's all no. 27. Yes, gotcha. individual units. For our security projects, we were able to get funding to create secure vestibules, and this is grant funding for Queen Anne's County High School and Kennard Elementary School. We have three other buildings that do not have secure vestibules as well. So we're asking for funding to create those vestibules at Bayside Elementary School and Ken Island High School. The fifth is Centerville Middle School, and we hope to be able to address that once we either renovate or build a new building for that location. We have shatterproof film that's listed here, which is a security device that essentially goes on main entrances as well as any of our quarter entrances that does not allow someone to break the glass and reach in to gain access. It's it's a, a deterrent that is meant to give you those few extra minutes if there is an intruder coming to the building. So we'd like to um, be able to continue some work there and get that. We have that at one pilot school. We'd like to be able to continue continue that through buildings throughout the district. We do have one security camera that's been requested. We have um, door access and AI phone requests here at the central office that will assist in other departments to see who's actually ringing for access. And then we have fencing, portables. There is um, difficulty with the portables at times in assuring that we have the same security that we do inside of the building. And so that's a project that we would like to undertake that we get some additional fencing for so those areas. So what type, areas. Of type of fencing would you be talking about? This is stop? a tough one. This is a tough one. Mm -hmm. um, we have to be able to maintain egress for fire code for any of the areas that we have fenced. We also run into the aesthetics of that. And do we start to make these outdoor areas look institutional? And that's what we, we've been working with several different contractors. And if the funding is ever allotted for a project like this, we'll take that to the next level. 
I can see locking would be an issue because if it's unlocked for the day, then yeah. the fence won't. And, won't and we that. have our, our county code officials who don't necessarily agree with the plans to do something like that as well because it is difficult for first responders to be able to get into those areas then. It's not as easy as the card access that they have to be able to get in or the master key. So that is a difficult challenge. Transportation, this year we only need to replace one special needs bus. We have to replace the buses every 15 years by law. And so we only have one on the docket this year. I'm gonna bring your attention to the line item in the center here for transportation and let you know up front that this is going to be stricken. So in looking at our bus patrol contract, which is a stop arm camera project that we just initiated, there was some confusion in the clarity of the contract as to what happened and it didn't give us clear direction. What happens with those fees that we incur monthly at the end of our five-year contract? Mrs. Towers and I were able to speak with the CEO of Bus Patrol as well as our project manager and what they have indicated is that Queen Anne's County Public Schools will not be responsible for any of those fees, that it's the revenue that's created from the citations that pays for those fees. If at the end of five years there is still money outstanding, if the citation program is still running, it will continue to pay against those, but Queen Anne's County Public Schools will not be responsible as indicated in the summer. So this will be stricken from the budget request. We, until we had clarity, wanted to make sure that we knew we had a request in for funding if it was necessary. Although we're all, hoping all for our, not too many All citations. our buses and all our contractor buses have all this installed now. So yes, that's basically correct. They're, they're red light cameras where if you are stopped, lights are on, they're gonna take a picture of you on both sides of you and you'll, you'll receive a uh, ticket. Yes, and the Sheriff's Office has already started rolling out the educational program on that. We're in the 30-day grace period, and as of March 1st, those citations, it's my understanding, will go live. So right now, everyone is getting a warning, and it sounds like as of today, we have three confirmed offenses that would have been able to have been given a citation, so that's since February 1st. We still expect to see more, because we, don't, we only have 50% of our students on buses, if we are making as many stops a day as we would in a normal year, we expect to see those increase. Is there a standard fee with the citation? What what type of money I, are we talking? I believe it's two hundred and fifty dollars. I'll have to take a look at that again, but it was in that area. Miss Towers is shaking her head. That's right. Mm -hmm. It probably goes against a vehicle, like a like a speeding camera. Yes. Well, we still want to hope we don't get a lot of them. Right? Well, that's correct. We, we certainly so you hope, hope, you hope that everyone deterrent. is being safe. You hope it's yes. a deterrent. But, but I, you know, we did hear a lot on 213. There's certain places I, we were talking last year, I think, when they were doing it, that are, you know, real issues, you know, that have a lot more than you would, you would think. Yes, and, and so far, up until this point, we've only had the call-ins from the drivers mm -hmm. that have really given us notification as to how many times that was happening. And it was quite frequently. Mm -hmm. So this, I think, will, will be proof as to what's been happening out there. So our next section is the technology plan. This is the five-year plan that Mr. Combs devises for us for replacement of of our devices, both student devices as well as staff devices. There are some infrastructure upgrades that are here that were not funded last year, so he would like to take care of that this year. We are looking at the purchase and replacement of computers for the, the labs, the computer labs at both the elementary level and at the high school level. He is also looking into the necessity for those since we do have a one-to-one -one device at the elementary level and we'll be corresponding with you about that. At the high school level, it's a little bit trickier because they have specialty software and programs that need to be utilized for the different classes that they are taking. That are not able to be downloaded onto their laptops. We have the CAD lab computers at both high schools. We are in year three of the lease for our student laptops for grades nine through 12. And we are on year four of the lease for the Chromebooks in grades five through eight. So 
what does that mean on the lease? I mean, are we are these all go the not gonna we don't own them after no. the end of this lease and we'd have to start again with Correct. This? The lease term starts over at that point. So we did paid about two point two million on the one lease for the high school? over the four years? That information we would have to get from Mr. Combs, and I don't think he's here with us tonight. We can get any of the questions that you have specific details. We'll definitely get him to assist with the answers and the responses for that. Do we have an idea of how many units we were talking about? I do not. Okay, thanks. But we'll pose that question to him and see if we can get some responses. Yeah, and and it is in the um, five-year plan, so we'll make sure that... Uh, we can share that yeah. as well. Yeah. This was decided back 2015. And, and then again in 2018. Yes. We so to, the and the county commissioners, we sat in this room and, and it was decided that leasing was the best option for the county. The last item that we have here is our textbook category. This year, the reading ELA and English for pre-K through five, we are requesting $500,000. Typically, that's about in the area that we see funding from the county in that $500,000 range. There were some other requests through CNI. Uh, Mrs. Towers was able to take a look at some of the savings that we had had over previous years in that textbook category, and we, be, we believe we'll be able to fund the other items that were requested through some of that savings. So. Um, in our budget this year is the 500,000 for reading. Well, it says, a, it says a pilot. We're doing a pilot now and then it, we buy into it next year. Is that how it works or? So come on up, Mr. Um, Page. But what we generally do is we try it out first, okay. right? With a few grades, we work out the kinks, and then we go district wide. Okay, so That's we, we're doing a pilot. Means. Okay, so we'll just do a Mr. test page, whatever. Right, but this five hundred thousand would be for the entire textbook adoption. The, it would be the whole thing if it, it gets adopted. Correct. But we, we're, we, what's, where's the cost of the first come from? Our operating budget. This is all. This is all capital. Well, I understand, but mm -hmm. if we're going to if we're going to pick out two or three grades, it still comes from here. Comes from here. Mm -hmm. But but the five hundred thousand is if we decide to do it next year. Correct. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Page. I believe Mr. Page is here for questions yeah. about okay. any of the textbook categories representing C and I tonight. So what do you give it to different a couple classes in each school, or how how does it, the pilot work? So, so uh, let me. I'm Michael Page. Sorry. I'm with Curriculum and Instruction. I'm representing that department tonight. Um, so, how a pilot typically typically takes place is yes, we receive materials from several providers, um, curriculum providers. We we evaluate those. We select certain materials that we would like to pilot. We go through a pilot, we review those materials, and then that, then we would go forward with whichever one you know worked best for us and had the best results. I don't know, a pilot takes a semester, a year, or? Uh, it does take different times. You know, if you're piloting three different materials, sets of materials that can be longer, it's best to start pilots as early as possible so that you can have multiple times uh, well, with s separate materials and you can review those. So yeah, so it can be it can be a short pilot depending on the the you know with K to five that's a big that's a big pilot that's a lot of that's a lot right. of uh, grade levels where if it's just one environmental education you know environmental science it's just one class in our secondary level that that may shorten the pilot but you may do a unit versus you may do a, a couple lessons and so, so on. So we do a pilot K through five will that be not all our schools, just certain ones. Could that would be the schools that are have our K to five, actually pre K to all, five. All, all, all schools would be pilot in it. So we get feedback from all the teachers and all the principals and we, all the supervisors. We, so we generally cr create a group. Okay. So a group of teachers who are selected by the school. So in my past, I've selected two teachers from each grade level, and then those two teachers from each grade level, then they're considered to be the piloters for that specific grade level. And then they provide feedback uh, to the supervisor in regards to, to, to how those worked for them and whether or not we wanted to adopt. And then they recommend to you and the decision brought to find out what you're going to do and how you're going to implement it that's correct and we have we just so you know we have we have a policy and procedures for mm -hmm. all of those those allocations and 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 funding for uh, for 
So the 500,000 figure is for doing K through five. Pre-K to five. Pre-K through five to the whole county. ELA. Correct. English language. Yes, sir. Reading. Can I ask you what prompted this? What prompted this? Yes. Uh, this particular item was prompted through our forecasting documents. So similar to what Mrs. Poulin has been discussing in regards to maintenance and, and keeping up with certain items, this is prompted by our forecasting documents that we have. So we have our documents in regards to when we've purchased, when our, when our contracts are finalized, and then it actually, this particular item is actually one year removed. So at the beginning of this year, we had to spend $90,000 on our ELA program in order to um, to keep it up and running. So we actually did not uh, have the funding to do this. Uh, we were able to maintain our ELL program at the K-25 uh, grade levels with purchasing a digital component to that. So was this a part of the curriculum ass assessment we did? What was that, 2017? 2016, that's right. right. So in 2016, okay. for all of you, that we had a uh, comprehensive curriculum audit in which they we had a company come in and review all of our curriculum and the content that we have. And this is exactly right. This is part of our continued effort to maintain uh, our- Remember when he came in and gave us the presentation on it. The quality of our, our curriculum, that's correct. And talking with our CNI team today, um, the changes to the reading and ELA documents. There have been some surveys that have been done of staff. Yeah, I have those too. So. Yep. Um, just in discussing the needs and what staff would like to see going forward with those. So they, they yes, correct. They are they are pulling them. Uh, actually, the the uh, survey is out till March first. So all. Uh, Pre-K to five staff have the ability to take the survey as to whether or not they need to or would like to adopt new curriculum and go forward with that or maintain. So I have some of that information here from um, Mrs. Um, Passon and Mrs. McNeil. And another thing that they wanted me to mention is that in 2023, MSDE is gonna do a full audit of our uh, ELA curriculum at that grade level. And um, we believe that, uh, you know, they strongly believe that if we maintain, uh, we'll be able to meet those requirements of the audit, but currently our current curriculum only partially meets that, so we need to work towards that. But if we were to um, purchase new curriculum from one of our new vendors, the new vendors um, materials that are up to date, so right now it's about, we're about seven years removed. Um, the new materials that we were to purchase, they are all um, underneath the, I believe it's called the, um, uh, I, can't, I don't have the name of this particular audit. Ed, I think it's Ed's, sorry, I don't have the particular name of the audit, but um, all the new materials would would meet the requirements of that audit. And as we've mentioned a couple times, we hope to have the conversation with the commissioners that this is a textbook line item, but now we foresee that other digital types of learning tools may be necessary as well as desirable, as opposed to hard textbooks of the past, and we're hoping that those materials would also be included and appropriate for this line item. For digital. I think that was brought up a little bit to meeting, wasn't it, Dr. Kane? Yes, we did bring that up to the commissioners. Would it be feasible to make it all digital? No, I, I mean, I'm just asking, yeah, I'm just throwing that out there. It, yeah. So, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there. Go ahead. Would you like me to answer? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So uh, there, there's always need for... Hardback, yes. Yeah, I, th I believe. So... Um, it's just the percentage that we would be getting over... You know, everyone getting digital, yes, but then a small percentage we would be getting hardbacks. There are some single source things that we just can't get around that are, are, are physical. Okay. So uh, to go fully digital is, is a difficult thing. To and do. you're talking pre-K to, I mean, it's, they're young right. kids. Right, right. The pre-K and the K. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, would, I mean, I like to look at something myself rather than this computer sometimes. Thank you. Absolutely. Other questions? Yeah. So, do, I mean, the thing on this board office, is that something that has to, is, are, you, are you looking for somebody for a decision there or that's just gonna? 
We'd like to have the conversation with you, yes, because of course, if we were to request that, we would want your or approval and uh, sure. Um, what I wouldn't want to see happen is for us to take the planning and design of this building forward to the commissioners, have that shot down, and then there isn't anything else that was requested in terms of repair to this building. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that I would just ask for you to consider that we would like we would like to and we need to make some sort of move forward, whether it be for another building or whether it be for this building, just to begin to make some repairs. A uh, survey that's been done by the thing, do you, you have copies of that? Yes. Could that be available to the board? So, Absolutely. Uh, I know that all of us need to look at it, but especially if two newer members, probably even more, <coughs> because uh, they get a little history of that. So we can actually, I mean, when we say the numbers are the same, I understand that. But um, you know, there's other other ramifications that sure, probably should we'll, be looked at. We'll absolutely share that feasibility study with everyone too. Hey, real quick about the uh, curriculum and instruction, the pilot program that you intend to implement or to pilot, um, is it got a particular name or is there a particular company that sponsors those or how does that work? How do we, how do we, how, yeah, I mean, you said you had like three, you would get like three assessments or uh, uh, assessments, so, but so, options. So three separate providers of ELA content. So it would be like McGraw Hill, yeah. uh, Savas, which is not, which was Pearson, um, HMH. Those are the, those are the people who um, provide the curriculum. Right. So they're the ones who makes the, make the textbooks, they make the uh, materials, those type of things. So what we do as supervisors is we reach out to all those separate providers, then they then they give us um, their materials, mm -hmm. and then we review their materials. Okay, and, and choose then, ones that we would like to pilot. Right. Okay. And that's all through a committee. Okay. And then where can we get the information on what the committee's decided? You know, which one you're going to go with, whether it's McGraw Hill or another provider. Um, so eventually, at the end of that process, we bring it to the board to approve the purchase uh, okay and where are we right now we're, we're looking where are we right now with this particular item i guess yeah just it, so i can get a we're just requesting we're, we're, the money we're requesting <laughs> the funds so, so nothing's been done nothing has been done as of this point because we're just we're in the point of can we actually go through the start the process and once we have the funds allocated then we can start that process okay so, so how do i know which one you're going to pilot then so I mean, you're going to pilot one of those options, correct? You're going to pilot three of them, aren't you? We could we we could look into piloting several. Okay. But so, right. So which ones are? How do I know which ones you're going to pilot? I, I know you're just asking for the funding now. I understand now um, for the pilot, but. Um, I, can I just can, email yeah, you? We, yeah, that, we can do this offline. Right, we, we, no, we can do it now. What we generally do is we look at the materials. We have committees that review the materials. And then we decide, okay, the committee like one, two, and three. And so we find teachers that want to pilot those. And, and they do. They try them out. This co The committee comes back to the board and say, okay, these are the three that we piloted. The committee gave this response. The teachers want this for whatever reasons. That information comes before for the board for approval because the board approves that contract. So so just for your reference, policy 620 states uh, exactly how we go ahead and the process. Uh, yes, yes, sir. And it also has regulations associated with that, which are, um, I think it's 620. 20.1. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, if we're expected to approve it, obviously I'd like to know more about it before it's, and you here's review, what we want approved. And you review, you review them as well. So the public and you have a chance for 30 days to yes. review all the materials. We put it out for a review. Well, okay. It can be pretty much on the same lines when we adopt a new textbook. That's exactly what this is. I mean, that's, yes. I mean, we, we, and, and it concerns me to no end when we adopt textbooks, nobody looks at them. I mean, you put them, up, I'm, I'm not, not yeah, myself, but, know. but you know, I'm, I'm a, I harp on this. I talk to people and I say, you know, read it, look at it because, you know, it's going to come in front of us. And if we, if we don't have any feedback from the public or anybody else, you know, it, it, it's, 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 you know, leaves us in a, in a position. And so this would be the same thing. It could be out. People can comment on it, you know, and, it, and earlier the better, because that's what we need. We need to put, you know, from professional staff, but also from the, from the community. 
Mr. Page, is there an overview somewhere where we can take a look at the at what's going to be put out there before it starts being if the fix out approved to be taught? Is there like an overview of the of the program you're trying to put out there? Does that make sense? Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm yes. Look, is there like an overview? Okay. Yes, and that is part of the review. So the committee will come back, Mr. Page or who, whichever supervisor, probably will be Ms. Passon and, and Mrs. Uh, McNeil. They'll come back and they'll share with you what happened at the committee, and they will sh allow you to take a look at those materials as okay. well. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And, and it won't be instantaneous. You'll have time to look at it. I have two questions. Yes. Um, first is back in sports. Okay. The high school track here in Queen Anne's at this stadium, originally when they did that turf field, the whole stadium was going to get revamped yes. to be ADA and the track was going to be the legit size for sports. Is that still on the table or are we just retopping it? That's a conversation for the commissioners and that is what we would plan to address with them in next fiscal year in 23. Um, the commissioners and the county did an assessment of both tracks during that process. Ken Island High School is found to be the one that was in the greater need, more dire need. Um, Queen Anne's County High School also has some improvements that definitely can be made. And so as to not overtax the county with our requests, we are trying to do them in separate years. So we do have Queen Anne's County High School and that discussion on our radar for 23. Okay, and then my second question, and this may have already been done, Mattapique Elementary, that overhang was chipping. Has that already been sandblasted? So we everything? took care of the canopy at the front of the school. What we have not yet done is the soffit area that is around the entire building where we have a lot of peeling and painting. We do have funding to do that and we anticipate that will be done this summer. Okay. Funding from prior years. Okay. And, and stuff like Mattapique Elementary, didn't you have like, a, we have a little leakage in the back end of the... Uh, yes. That, <laughs> yes. Is that a small thing or is that something that's capital or is that just something we're trying to take care of so we did get some capital money for that last year in our site work line item that we were able to do gutter replacement as well as some grading. Gutters we still were too have small a little or something more. somebody said. The gutters were sized appropriately. The shape of them did not allow the water to collect as much in those gutters. So we were able to replace those and that has given us definitely some relief. We were able to clear out all of the drain systems all the way back to the stormwater pond. We found that we had a lot of blockage. That has helped significantly and we've done some grading. There's still a little bit more grading that we would like to do there to get the water to the drains, but we have seen a, a significant improvement. It is not 100%. I would say it's at about 98% so we have a little bit more work to do, but we have greatly, greatly reduced the amount of water infiltration. Do we have a maintenance program? I mean, when you start talking gutters and drains, things fill up. Leaves get in them. Yes. Animals climb up the drain. Yep. And things get stopped up. Do yeah. we have a general maintenance thing that we try to keep things we do. opened up? Okay. We do. That's part of what our maintenance team schedules is preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, things like filter changes. They walk the roofs, especially for before any type of large storm. They walk the roofs. Um, so yes, there's there's something that we do on an incremental basis to check See, all of those items. Not just wait till it backs up. We try to be preventive a little bit, yep. somewhat. Yes, absolutely. And, and just to give everyone a reminder, especially for our new board members, the funding that we are requesting in this year, fiscal year 22, does not become available to us until July 1st. So many of the projects that we've discussed here, the smaller ones, we will have an opportunity to do some things over the summer. Many of the projects then happen the following summer or what we can do during the school year, just so everyone has an understanding that this the time frame is, is shifted just a little bit based on the timing of when the money becomes available. And and things like painting and roof stuff you want to get done when students aren't in aren't occupied 100% are summer occupied projects yes reminding everyone last march april and may june when students weren't in the buildings quite a few things got done that's correct we were able to continue working uh, provided that our contractors were able to work through covid and most of them relished the opportunity uh, anybody have any further questions Thank you. Right. Oh, and Mr. Thank Page, you. thank you very time. much. Mm -hmm. yep.
Now Ms. Towers is gonna to talk with us a bit about uh, staffing. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Kane, and board members. This evening on your desk was the staffing for open positions by school by grade. Our next step in the budget process that we've been doing, as Dr. Kane said, we are down to the wire here. We've done our due diligence. We've collected all the, the data that's helped support, build, and fiscally responsible budget. We have looked at all school requests and department requests. We've looked at the cost impact of one step and 1%. We've had results from the budget survey. We have our draft revenue numbers. We looked line by line by account number that flows through to the master budget here. So um, the next step is next week. We like to bring before you different scenarios. We'll have it emailed to you by Friday. And the sheet is in that corner or in that pocket on the left of your board book. This right here is the last step in order to build your master budget. So this right here, I'll explain into detail. This is the scenario. We'll have different scenarios for you next week. On the left-hand side is your revenue. What do we project for our revenue number? So we know in order to get a balanced budget, what is our revenue number? Then on the right is the variables that come into play. You have what was approved last year and you either build from that, add to it, or subtract from that. So that is what we will do next week in the different scenarios. And my hope is to have this interactive next week. So if there's, oh, what, what is the impact if we take this off? You see the difference down here? There's a difference column, so it helps us reconcile back to our revenue. And um, if there's any questions over the weekend or if there's a scenario you'd like me to run before next week, um, be glad to put the question out there and we'll run it for you for next week. A couple questions I got. Of course. Kerwin passed or was governor's, Kerwin bill or whatever was overrode by the uh, senator or whatever, I guess. Governor, how the veto, veto is ever run. Is that going to affect us? For Kerwin? Uh-huh. Uh, no, we are given the draft budget numbers, and we're hearing that, that they are pretty well solid. We're hearing no changes to our foundation money, which would include the Kerwin, is what I'm hearing currently. So that's not going to affect us in a negative way? Not what I'm hearing in fiscal year 22. We meet weekly with MSDE and the CFOs, and that has not come up as a factor to consider for 22. Okay. But I can definitely ask that question next Tuesday, too. I just, with that. you know, I mean, I'm just seeing this in the news or something, and it, it might mean nothing, it might mean something, but with the numbers they were throwing out a couple of years ago, moving this up this, the chain was quite scary, right. especially when I see us, you know, with our student role being down, being an understand to hold harmless and trying to keep things even. But, you yes. know, when we're even and we start talking about steps and 1% and doing this and doing that, um, it's, it's, a, it's a real concern. Um, and I, and I know the board could decide on it, you know, tapping health care is not, to me, a good option, but that's just personally me. Um, but we're, you know, we're running into March to get all this done because I think, Dr. Kane, if I'm not right, we're, you go in front of the commissioners on the 6th with the budget? April. April, I'm sorry, April the 6th. And our meeting is the 7th. So, you know, th this board has to have this done you know, and because there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of decisions prior to going in front of the commissioners. Then there's going to be more decisions after that. You know? Correct. Um, over the past couple of weeks, we've kind of been in the weeds, looking at the data, building up that uh, the numbers to support what kind of decisions that have to be made. And next week is going to be the time to roll up our sleeves and and, and take a look at it. Okay. 
I usually have <laughs> Mrs. Wright print things out for me because I can follow them here easier I can here. Now, any other board members who rather have a hard copies next week when we go over this budget piece like by have, piece? I would like to have hard copies. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. I print mine out, so I'm fine. You're fine? Okay, so maybe we can get some hard copies just so you can follow it a little bit, you know. So, so next week it will be the budget scenarios, mm -hmm. and from the scenarios goes into the requested. Got so it. it this summarizes exactly what the scenarios are, and definitely I can have those printed out. And then, like I said, I'm, I like to have it interactive too because if you have an idea, Dr. Kane says, hey, what if we did this? We can see if we're in balance and, and what impact that is. Yeah, because a lot of times one decision, you know, it's it's a Snowballs. domino effect. You know, yes. what we, it sounds good. This is a great idea, except when you start thinking about it, uh, you look at the budget and. Uh, but you all have copies of everything at this point. Mm -hmm. um, we got the budget book. You have yes. a, a new budget book. You've got mm -hmm. the. Oh yeah, we got all that. that. Yeah, you got everything. It's just, it's just what's the, the day when uh, we were going over this capital thing. I had, I you had Miss Wright printed. It's just easier for me to follow uh, this, uh, you know, thing yeah, piece you by could piece. Just talk to Miss Wright about you know, things. and just any board members can talk to Miss Wright about that. Um, yeah. But it's just sometimes it's easier to see the lines and what the numbers are. And make notes and everything, mm -hmm. of course. Our $3 million, hopefully, COVID grant that comes, where is that in the works? Um, it, we submitted it? The application is due next week. Okay. What we did, uh, what we have done is we've opened it up to all supervisors, principals for their requests. We've received the request back. The last request we're waiting on is for summer school because summer school is going to be, and Dr. King can speak to this uh, more in depth, but it's going to be open to uh, more students than we have in the past. So that $3 million, it sounds like a big number, but between, we have to also account for in that ESSER request, some PP&E, because that ESSER two goes from, it's a two-year grant. So we have to take into consideration our PP&E needs too as well, in addition to summer school. So um, like I said, on Friday, we'll have the numbers for summer school projected out, but we have received feedback from and reviewed at executive team all the ESSER requ two request. Dr. King, when we get back next couple weeks and we're back now, we'll find some of the gap issues we're going to have with students. By gap, you gap, mean you know, like, academic well, gaps? Academic gaps. Uh, and hopefully summer school, will that be offered in all schools pretty much? Well, we'll have some cluster sites. Okay. But it'll we'll have for all grades. In fact, we just got information from MSDE about a summer learning opportunity for pre-K. Okay. You know, three going into four. And this could be voluntary, but it could be open Correct. to all, it could be open to all students. It is it it is prioritized by income. So okay. generally those those kinds of funds are. So there are some priorities, income and uh, special needs, of course, come first. But uh, we certainly have with our regular summer program that we're going to have mm -hmm. opportunities for I mean, all grade levels. Right. And, and I, you know, I can come and I understand special needs and all that, but I'm just afraid we have some, you know, with this distant learning, we're going to have some gaps and I just hope we can get, get. That's the, what, yep. That's what the purpose of that is. Okay. For. So I just hope the students that understand it and are recommended to the program can get into it and, you know, it's going to, it's going to be challenging, but uh, the quicker we get them back up to speed, I think sooner the better Absolutely. if we can. And are we protecting that to be in person or are we planning for virtual? That, that, that is for per in person. And with that, and I know it's probably premature. Transportation is is that provided by the families or will no, do no, some? no. That we have uh, transportation for in the grant. In the grant, mm -hmm. okay. So it could just be like not regular school, but it would be yeah. regular school. We just go for. A, and you get on the bus. Mm -hmm. You get on the bus and come to school for mm -hmm. one or two days a week or whatever it is. That's correct. I, I believe, that the, is there two sessions, Dr. Kane? four So we're, we're looking at two four-week sessions. Two four-week four week sessions. sessions. So it'll be a four-week session, four-week sessions. So parents would have the option. Correct. The, the students would be going the whole summer. They'd be going half a summer. Correct. So remind me. I, does the board have to give grant spending authority for this new three million? We had to do it for the first seven hundred sixteen thousand. Do we have to do it for the three million? Um, That's a, no, it's MSDE approves that. The I'll individual. Check into that. If the, so I'll bring it next. Yeah, week. the individual items, if they fall into 
the dollar threshold, then we would bring those, but the grant itself, no. Let me just ask that we really look at PPE for next year, because we, oh, we don't know what two the burn years. rate's gonna be. Yeah, two years. You have no idea what the burn rate's gonna be, or how long this is gonna last. Yep. Can we get grants for summer school? Just asking, is there? So some of this is grant, is grant. So the okay. regular is uh, across the grades, you know, one through five, um, or K through K through 12, I should say, is SR2. And the uh, pre-K, three years old into four years old, going into kindergarten, is a pre-K enhancement grant. So both of them are grants. Great. And then um, maybe some Title I funds might be available. And we Dr. always King. do Title I mm -hmm. and migrant families. Correct. Will that take away from the Title I funds we use during the course of school year? N no. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a total this separate. Is, yep, that's totally separate. This is in addition to those funds. But with the pre K um, enhancement grant, we are using similar criteria. So based on income, special needs first, prioritized. And I'm assuming we're tapping our staff, the vol not volunteer, they're going to get paid for it, but to come in on a book. I mean, you, yes. I mean, they're on a contract yes. for 180 days teaching. And some them. more, yeah. And, and But they will be asked to teach that four block or four week block. Or yep, that is correct. So we've already started asking teachers to teach summer school. And so this is a public announcement. Please, please, please consider teaching summer school because we need more and more teachers. So uh, please consider. And a lot of the students that would be attending the summer programs are uh, identified by teachers or both teachers and the parents have Teachers concern. and the parents. Okay. There, there will be so many opportunities that if you want your child to go to a summer program, your child should be able to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Kane, is that five days a week and then what are the hours? It's it's four days a week where, where the buildings are closed on Fridays and it's generally a half day program uh, and without off the top of my head, I'm going to say somewhere between 9 and 12. Okay. okay. Students start arriving generally around 8.30 or so. So, Can can this get, I mean, uh, this, this is get out to the public as we, as it rolls out once more information. Planned, because absolutely. Because just like normal. Once everything is planned, that will definitely go out to the family so that they can make some decisions about if they want their children to protect. Because I mean, people start planning for summers and absolutely. that way they could, you know, the more information we get earlier, even though. Just it, like normal. Okay. Just get out as, as early as we can so they have the options to understand what, what's being offered. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention is GEARS 2 is out there. The grant application does end next Friday too. It is um, a $1 million grant that they're awarding up to 10 schools statewide. It could be public, non-public schools. Uh, Mr. Page and uh, other um, supervisors have worked hard on a proposal for Queen Anne's County and um, just wanted to bring that to your attention too as we well. That would be when we know about that. It, it, the application is due next Friday. The turnaround, they're telling me, is March 23rd okay. to notify. So within a month. Mm -hmm. And there's 10 of them going out? There's 10 in the state that is going to be awarded at $1 million each. To the, a school system? A school system. So we're talking or, 23 school systems or whatever, plus private schools? Correct. It's a competitive grant, so you have to do your best with a proposal that strikes their eye, and hopefully you get selected. Trying to get every dollar. Oh, I, 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 you know. Right. Good. I, I appreciate Who's putting that together? Who's putting that right. together for us? Um, that is through the curriculum office. Michael Page is uh, been steer or heading that as and, well yeah. as um, Amy Smith mm -hmm. and other people. So it's just another avenue um, to go uh, further for the students. All right. Well, yeah. thanks to them. Yeah. Uh, Yes, exactly. So we've got some great ideas to include our favorite environmental uh, education and STEM and STEAM, and so we're excited. We've got some more work to do on it, but headed in the right direction. Okay. So next week we're diving into the scenarios. They'll be out there um, Friday. If you'd like to see a different scenario on there, Dr. Kane or anything else, um, I'll be glad to do that before the meeting and we'll have it printed out for you then. Mm -hmm. And from the scenarios, it rolls right up into the master budget book for uh, March 6th. 
and don't forget if you have questions to post them to the um, spreadsheet, the question sheet. So, and don't forget to take a look at the responses that are on there already for the questions that have been posed. And you got a new link uh, today, I think this morning, um, so that you have it fresh in your email. So it be close to the top of your inbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because uh, I see it's been posted from 120 up to the most recent one is 216. So, you know, everybody, they have it. Towers, yes. What is that page you're talking about? This. Oh, um, this is a scenario page. No, the other page. This right here? No, I have that one. Oh, the other page that you picked up. The five year comparison? Okay, so that goes back to that. Okay, thank you. Yes. So the five-year comparison is basically going line by line in this budget book. It describes it in detail. You can tie it back to there. Thank you. I want to thank you, Ms. Powers, for keeping us so organized and, and methodical about this process, making sure that everybody has all their information and getting their, all their questions answered. You've done a great job. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I'll be seeing you a lot of you next couple of weeks. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's the last we have there. Our future school board meetings, we have a work session next Wednesday the 24th. We'll have a regular school board meeting March the 3rd. And we have two workshops scheduled in March the 10th and 17th. Um, there are two other, uh, it's the 24th and 31st, we'll just leave them alone right now uh, and find out where we are after the next couple meetings. Uh, but like I said, Dr. Kane, the commissioners will be getting our budget on the 6th of April. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have to tie this up in March. Okay. Any other things for the board? Anybody, board have any questions? Hi, Miss Bass. How you doing? <laughs> plenty of teachers, plenty of subs. Everything going well? And no vaccine. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, that's an interesting question. Are we, I, I, you know, you see it in paper and you see things. Are we getting our 100 a, a week? We share. We what? We share. We, we sh share the 100 a week. With who? The pop-up clinics. Public clinics. Oh, but do, do, do the Board of Education people get to go? They get to go. I send out the links and they get to go. We but are we, to oh. 330. Are we, no. are we getting a, are we getting a hundred a week in our arms for our board people or our staff people? I can't say that you're getting a hundred. But but it, we're, yeah. we're supposed to be allocated that either Post through the health department or the yeah. CVS or Absolutely. Walgreens or whoever. Absolutely. Okay. And they. Three thirty. We up. We're up to three thirty now. You're up to three thirty as of today. And I think we're six or six hundred, seven hundred is what signed up for it or something. So we're halfway there. Up to the they people. can get it in their county if they can find it. Right. They live somewhere else. Okay. Do, 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 uh, when they get it, do they inform you they have it, or do we? I did send out a Google Doc to ask that very question. It's running live, but remember, that's a HIPAA. They don't have to tell me their health issues, whether they get a vaccine. Am I right, Ms. Morissette? That's correct. Well, I just, I just like to, you know, if we, if, if we have 350, we want 300 more to go. I, I, names, I'm just, are, 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 you know, we're heading in the right direction and um, never fast enough, but at least we're keeping up on it. Absolutely. I have not gotten a link this week, so let the public know that. I have not gotten a link. So that's why they don't have the invitation. And the only other thing, I, I've said it before, keep your ID card with you, so you're a staff member, that when you go there, it's for Queen Anne's County. Board of Education staff, public schools, drivers, teachers, custodians, but you know, the next round could be, could be after that. And to be clear, there's 100 doses that are allocated for education and daycare. That's 100 doses for public schools, private schools, Chesapeake College, and daycare providers. Not just us. We are obligated to do all of them. Mm -hmm. This week, no vaccine has been received when I left the building today. Today's Wednesday, so you haven't received this week's allocation. We have not. No, because the, the lab it's manufactured out of is in the New England states, which is getting hammered. Yeah. So the weather is impeding our deliveries. Okay. How's our numbers looking? 
We were sitting around just over 6% and 15.3 per 100,000 cases. Now that fluctuates day to day. We could hop right. back to 7%. We haven't hit 5% yet. But we're... It's, it's declining, and then it'll pop up a day or two, and then yeah. it comes back. We were down to five something, and then we jump back up to six. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, you know, we could have a, a day of eight positives, and then you'll, the next day you could have 25 positives. So it, it pops up and down. But it, statewide, we're seeing a steady decline. That's good news. Any other board member questions are good for the cause? Anybody? Can I hear a motion to adjourn? I moved. Second. All those in any discussion, all those in favor, aye. 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 Thank you. All right.